Hello, and welcome back to My Therapist's Witch. My name is Elizabeth, and I am a somatic psychotherapist in training, and I am also a witch. And today I thought we could dive a little more deeply into the world of premenstrual dysphoric disorder and some very real, concrete, mundane tools, and perhaps a bit of magic to kind of help support y'all who either have recently been diagnosed with PMDD or who are going through it and who haven't really found footing. So a caveat is that I take premenstrual dysphoric disorder to be very serious. I have it. And I have been living with it since I started my period. So it's been well over 10 years at this point. It's been around 15 now. And I have gone through many interventions over the course of my lifetime, and none of them have really worked for me. And when I started to take a more holistic approach to my PMDD symptoms and kind of my whole life, I started to notice how my PMDD became more manageable and less all-consuming and overwhelming. I have recently graduated from a somatic psychology program, something I never thought I would have the stamina to do. And I really believe that with the right support, PMDD can become a little less overwhelming. Now, I'm also a person that believes in a yes and approach. So everything I'm about to share can also be added on to conventional standards of care. And I just want to make this a very safe space that whatever you need, it's appropriate and it's right. And all I'm doing here is just offering some tools and some things that have really helped me along the way and offering them gently for you to try and just see what happens. So with that being said, I view PMDD as this journey of this sort of hero's journey that we face every single month. And as I've kind of taken that myth and that frame, it's helped me to look outside of just my hell week or my PMDD week to all the other weeks in the month of how can I kind of ready myself, how can I best support myself to be able to tread that water a little bit easier or fight that dragon and know that I'm going to win at the end. And what has really helped me is looking at this and understanding that healing is not linear and neither is your PMDD. So what do I mean by this within the context of this experience? In my cycle, some months are really freaking awful, really bad, and some months aren't. And that fluctuation, that natural kind of dance that we can have with our PMDD can also interrupt when we are trying something new or we're putting these practices into play. And depending on where we are in our cycle, depending how that month goes, it can either feel like, wow, this is really working or, oh my God, it's not and I feel worse. So because there is this natural fluctuation that can occur, I really focus not necessarily on, you know, oh, I tried this new practice and then the next month I had my PMDD. It was, it was all fine and great. I kind of try to look at things from a very broad and wide perspective. So because I've recognized this kind of natural dance in my cycle, I don't allow myself to get discouraged if one month it comes around and it's awful. I don't immediately move into, oh, it's something that I'm doing. 
because I've created this relationship with myself where I know, oh, this is probably just a bad month. So the key here is to be able to create some distance between you and the experience of PMDD. And that can be very difficult because we know all those emotions can come forward, that kind of voice in your head that's super critical that just kind of goes and goes and goes during that week and it sounds like you and so the more we can create a mindfulness practice practices that can support that differentiation the easier it can become to hang on to yourself when that week is happening and not get as lost so with that kind of as some foundation here, I wanted to go in to a little bit of just basic management. And I've shared this before, and I think I've spoken kind of more deeply in how I specifically track my cycle, but that's really the foundation is every month tracking your symptoms and doing it for long enough that you can begin to anticipate when your hell week is going to hit. And the reason why that's really important is because it also helps with that differentiation. So when you start to feel different, you start to notice what is going on, you can look at the calendar and you can go, oh, this is why. This is why I'm all of a sudden feeling so different than myself is because I'm in my PMDD week, or it's right around the corner and it's about to hit. So that's step one. Track your cycle and have an intimate relationship with it. Know when it's going to come. The second key to management is taking care of yourself. Stress of any kind has compounding factors on any experience that we have. So if you're stressed, if you're overworked, if you're not taking care of your body and yourself, then your PMDD can be really bad that month. So I think it's really important that we kind of give our body a fighting chance. So that could look like making sure you're getting enough sleep when you can, lowering your stress, finding, you know, food that really nourishes you, that you feel good about eating, things like that. Also, once we are tracking and knowing our cycle, creating some pretty firm boundaries in your life so that you're not adding on stressful things during your hell week. So for me, I I basically become unavailable during that week. I have to do the bare minimum to get through my week and do my day. So it's not like I can take a whole week off of work. But I offer myself the space to have a lot of time after I do the things that I absolutely have to do. So for instance, I have a job. I have to work, you know, during the week. So when I know my PMDD is going to come, I don't necessarily plan a whole lot of extra things. I don't plan on giving a presentation. I don't plan on having to send something in if I'm still in a school kind of program. And what that does is it kind of takes off a little bit of the load because PMDD is enough. On its own. And then the other key piece to this management that I've found that's really helped me is cultivating a mindfulness practice and daily practices that I can do to really um, cultivate that inner wise woman inside. You know, the part of me that the PMDD can't touch, the part of me that is observing the experience. One of the things that I have found a lot of comfort in witchcraft and magic in my practice 
is this gentle offering of daily ritual and daily practices that kind of welcome in a little bit of magic every day. And for me, that frame, that sort of context within the world of witchcraft has, one, brought me a lot of autonomy. It's made me really feel like I can do something, even when I feel like I can't. And two, it makes it fun. It makes it something that I am excited to do every day. And I think that that's really important when we move into a daily practice or a daily type of ritual is that it shouldn't just be about drinking, you know, an icky green juice every day or doing a lot of exercise at the gym that you're going to be sore and you're going to dread going and doing or, or whatever it is. Like there should be an element of play and fun so that we're motivated to do it every day instead of it feeling stressful and like another thing on our to-do list that we have to do. So for me, having that differentiation from sort of the mundane world into my spiritual or magical practice, it allows me to dive a little bit more deeply into it and it allows me to welcome it every day versus dreading it. So this is sort of where we intersect a little bit between psychology and a daily practice. For me, I think whether it's a spiritual daily practice or a mundane daily practice or whatever it is, the power behind the daily practice is within neuroplasticity or where we literally begin to change our brain to take in something different or to be a little bit more flexible. So neuroplasticity, how I kind of remember it or think about it, is, is that we can change our brain. We can literally change the way we think and the way we view the world. And in that alone, that's kind of magical, right? That we can move from a very negative, restrictive mindset, which definitely has an effect on how we view the world, to a more positive mindset, which affects the way we look at the world. So prior to my practice and really owning my spirituality was that I found these very scientific, mundane practices to be inaccessible, to be honest. So for instance, uh, every day sit down and do a gratitude practice or make sure when something good happens, you really slow down and you really take that in. There was something about that that just didn't work for me and didn't land right. And it wasn't fun. It wasn't motivating me to do it. So I looked at, okay, how can I get to the same destination, but maybe take a prettier route? And for me, that was really through the tool of witchcraft, where I started finding these similarities in spiritual books or from other practitioners that, you know, we were ending up at the same destination, but the way that they were offering me the journey was way more accessible than outside of a spiritual context. So within the world of magic, it really created a safe container for me to explore what actually regulated my body and soothed me, what I found achievable every single day, what I could actually do. And for me, one of the most important bits was having that motivation of wanting to do it every single day. So here's a, a little bit of what my daily practice looks like now as I've spent several years cultivating it. And this is something that I do not just, you know, 
when there's going to be a dark or full moon, this is something that I do on the daily. I always start my morning with at least an hour all to myself. So I will make some coffee, kind of wake up a little bit, and then I go to my altar space. And I take a moment to drop into myself and usually some authentic movement kind of arises uh, or there's that desire. And so I'm opening my body, I'm moving my body. And from there, I kind of follow whatever my body and my mind are asking for. So almost always there's a movement practice involved and then there's a mindfulness practice. And after I do that, then I make sure to take time to write in my journal. So I will track what day it is. I will be very deliberate on what my mood is right when I wake up. And I jot down any insights that I receive from my practice. So any, anything that's coming into my conscious awareness, I jot it down. And just setting that time aside for me every single day also allows me to feel into my intention or feel into how do I want to move through my day. So for example, I might say, um, I might say I want to move through my day with ease and grace. And when I set that intention at the beginning of my morning and I take the time to engage all of my senses in with the intention. So I usually have a candle lit to kind of set the space. I burn an incense or some essential oil that I really like that soothes and calms my body. So I'm beginning the day from a well-regulated place. And these are the tools that I have that do that for me within the context that also supports me to do it. Now, if you're not into the kind of song and dance that I do, you can do the same thing, but it could be more in a scientific or mundane context. And here, mundane, no judgment, it just means, you know, of the earth rather than a spiritual resource. So with my daily practice, what I have learned over the years of doing it is that it has changed my brain. It's changed the way that I perceive everyday things. So I find it extremely resourcing to feel like my existence is a part of a greater purpose. You know, my loving partner has a phrase where he'll say, you know, sometimes you just got to give it up to God. And frankly, given my history and what I go through every month with PMDD, some days, sometimes I just kind of have to give it up to God to kind of help me through it. So that's something that's resourcing for me. But the key here is what's resourcing for you? And to really figure that out and know what that is so you have that support. And as I really learned about my needs and what I needed in order to be calm and well-regulated and settled within myself, I started, you know, noticing the divinity around me. I started noticing how grateful I was to be able to live in the area that I live in. I had a deeper connection to the earth and nature and being able to hike in it or take walks just even around my home outside. There was something very profound about it and very spiritual. And I live in an area where there's a lot of deer, where there's quite a lot of wildlife and the more that I moved into my daily practice, it's almost like I began to notice it more. And the noticing, then my mind put meaning to it. 
in a way that was extremely sweet and kind to myself. Like I remember um, there have been several times when I'm in my hell week and my symptoms are just like I feel like I'm wanting to crawl out of my own skin. And walking is a big resource for me because it's a way for me to kind of get that energy out. And there have been times when I am walking down the street and I am on the verge of just breaking down into tears because my mind is being really nasty and mean to myself and my body feels like shit. And there have been several moments where I just happen to turn and there's an animal there or there's more specifically a deer. And they're not afraid. They're just paused and there's this connection that happens and in that fleeting moment, I experience relief. And it's almost like a flip then kind of switches where then for the rest of my walk, I am just sort of in this gracious space with myself because I had this moment with nature and this, this deer. And that's a part of what I really value about my practice as a whole is that it has opened me to more and more of those moments. And within those moments, whether it be a moment of synchronicity or a moment of connecting to something divine, I experience relief. I experience a brief moment of not being all consumed by my PMDD. And so as I've cultivated this and I've had these experiences even outside of my hell week, it's almost created this buffer a little bit where I don't think so negatively anymore. And prior to this practice, I had a really negative uh, outlook on life. It was very easy for me to become all consumed by the critical voice inside of my head. It was really difficult to give people the benefit of the doubt. I was even externally really critical. And it made that moment when I was in my PMDD feel like just an extension of myself. Like I couldn't quite differentiate as much because I was already seeing so much negativity on the outside. Now I know I'm kind of within this talking a little bit about positive mindset, taking in the good, things like that. And just a very true fact is that our brains are literally wired towards negative bias because that's how we evolved to survive. You remember the bad things. And it's really difficult to make the good things stick. And so this way of daily practice of cultivating a spiritual path that works for you and doing it can move the negativity bias towards spending a little bit more time on what's going well, what's good, what do you like about yourself. And because PMDD has such a negative tone attached to it, at least for me, it has been critical to cultivate a part of myself that can fight against that negativity, that can fight against that inner critic that gets extremely loud during my PMDD. And so the more you do it, the easier it gets. It's like working a muscle. And it's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It is very difficult. And the way that I'm offering a road to that place may not be the road for you, but my encouragement is to just keep practicing, keep trying, keep working at it, keep exploring, find a way to get there that works for you. Now say you are journaling, you really know what works for you and you create a daily practice that's fun and you're doing it every single day. The other kind of additive to this is that PMDD can be inconsistent. So say you're doing all the things and 
you have a month that your PMD symptoms aren't as bad. And now that can be really encouraging in the moment because, oh, wow, what I'm doing is it's working. And wow, I've really found the thing that works for me. This is awesome. This is great. I'm going to keep doing it. And say you, you, you're you consistent. You keep going. And then the next month, it's awful. And then the story can come online of this isn't working anymore. Oh, gosh, I have to completely throw it all away and start again like blah, 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 blah. The story unfolds and continues. And I know the story because the story happened to me over and over and over again. And because it happened to me over and over and over and over again, there just became a point in my life where I was like, okay, what if I just do these things for six months? No matter what, I'm just going to do them regardless of what my symptoms are. And that's when I really tracked how inconsistent my symptoms were, where there could be two months of where it's kind of mild, and then another month where it's really bad, and then the next month, eh, kind of okay, and then the next month, really bad, or maybe three months of being pretty awful. And what that did was it allowed me to differentiate and go, okay, This is what you're doing, the PMDD. This is not what I'm doing. And I don't have to take that story unless I want to. Because I started to become hypervigilant and afraid of my PMDD symptoms. And there was a point that I can remember where I felt crushed by it. Like I had been trying all the things, I had been doing everything people had told me to do, and it just felt like no matter what I did, nothing was getting better. And it was debilitating, and it was frustrating, and all I wanted to do was give up and stop because I was just so tired of it happening over and over again. And when I was in that mindset, I realized that I had made my PMDD this sort of constant impenetrable thing that was always going to be there. And it kind of made me feel like I was getting pushed and tossed all over the place by it. And I really wanted to flip that story. So I wanted my PMDD to be the kind of external thing that was changing but I was the grounded constant. So rather than me, and sometimes I don't know how to articulate something outside of metaphor, but sometimes what it felt like was that I was sort of this warrior that every month was traveling across great lands and finding a castle with a dragon in it and fighting that dragon on new terrain, terrain that I didn't quite know. And sometimes it felt like the dragon was winning. And so then I'd leave and then I'd be okay on the road for a while. And then I'd have to go find another castle with a dragon to kind of slay again. And I realized I didn't quite have the tactical advantage in the way that I was approaching this thing. So I thought, okay, well, I don't actually have to go searching for a dragon because it's going to come to me anyway. So what happens if I build my own castle where I know where everything's at and I can build these really big guns (laughs) to be able to fight this thing when it comes? And yeah, I might not know exactly when it's going to hit, but I'm going to be ready when it does. And what that did was it sort of removed the anticipatory dread that I was experiencing every month. And it gave me a purpose to continue on to my daily practice because it wasn't for the dragon's benefit, it was for my benefit. So those stories in my head of will this ever end? Why can't I just be different? 
oh my God, I'm feeling it. Is is this going to be the month that I fall into a spiral of depression? You know, all of that. And when I started to reinforce my own castle, I noticed that when I started to feel my symptoms, I started to have this internal fighter inside of myself that was like, all right, bring it on. Like, here we go. Okay. We're set. We know how to do this. Let's go. And that really helped me a lot. And it started to, in some ways, remove the fear out of hitting that week. And so I wasn't bracing as much anymore. I wasn't, oh God, it's going to happen. I wasn't as hypervigilant. It was more of like, look, I know that it will come. And I get to actually find peace and safety in that level of consistency. I can't quite tell if this month's going to be bad or good, and that's okay. Because I know I can get through it. And if it is really bad, I have these tools and I have these things that are really going to support me because I am now in my castle and I'm not doing this on the road. I think based on the standard Western medical model, there's this projection that coping or management or healing has this definitive end goal. And so with PMDD, I definitely had this sort of internalized narrative of if I just do the right things, then it'll be done. I'll be cured. I won't have to deal with it anymore. I just want it gone. And what that did was it really made my PMDD this adversary. You know, this experience that is a part of me that happens to my body every month, it was vilified as this like horrendously evil thing that was going to happen to me every single month. And if I was ever going to be successful, if I was ever going to be the person that I want to be, I got to get rid of it for good. And I just reached a point where I realized that every single person has this type of cycle. It's sort of like we're all snakes and every month or at a certain point we have to shed our skin because it's too tight and we got to grow and we have to expand. And, you know, as human beings, most of us don't like change. We're creatures of habit. And so for me, I was in this experience of my skin, like literally shedding every single month. And I could either welcome that experience as just a part of my nature or I could fight it and try to cling to skin that was too small for me each month. And so taking that on, it allowed me to move a little bit out of this mindset that if I'm doing well, then it means that I don't have PMDD anymore. And now into I am a happy, healthy person that can achieve everything that she wants to achieve. And I also happen to have PMDD. And so in this way, as I really started to accept this experience that my body goes through, it actually made it easier for me to cope with it. Because now I wasn't searching for the thing that would get rid of it forever. Now I was taking a mindset of like, okay, this dragon is here in my life. How do I start to cultivate a relationship where perhaps this dragon starts to serve me? And taking that mindset, it gave me this purpose of why do I feel these things every single month? And I started processing them. I started to really look at the stories that my mind told me during that week. I started looking at my somatic symptoms of like what my body was telling me during that week. And I started to look at what was the real suffering? What was the worst part of this experience for me? So for me, 
I've always been a very ambitious person. I've always felt like if I just didn't have PMDD, wow, I could be so great. Like all the things that I could have achieved if I didn't have this thing like halting me every single month. And it created this limiting belief that I can never do the things that I want to do because I have this. And that was the real pain point for me. That was where the suffering was. Because in that moment where I was forced to slow down each month, that story, that critical story, those limiting beliefs just got real loud and actually justified. Because when the story in my head was, you know, you're a failure, you just can't. And then I'm in a week where I literally just can't. It almost felt like I was living my worst nightmare each month. And this is where I want to just offer something. I think I really needed to get clear about what was the real pain point for me. So then I could really look at it and be with it. And so looking back now from where I sit, the moments where I felt like I was really failing, the moments in my healing journey where I did not think I was making any progress at all, where I thought, wow, this is awful. Those moments were really necessary because that was the moment where the dragon became real, where I could see it. And it allowed me to start the process of individuation, of separating myself from that. So I am a huge young fan, Jungian psychology. And one of the things that I think is the real journey with PMDD and what perhaps is the gift that we have as an opportunity as folks who experience this thing is that it can be sort of the highway or in the fast lane towards individuation and coming into contact with the self. Now, from a Jungian perspective, the self is the unification of the unconsciousness and the consciousness within the individual. And by going through this process of individuation, where we look at the various parts of our personality and then we integrate them, that's how the self is born. So for me, PMDD each month was like coming into conscious awareness with my shadow, with all the parts of my personality that I wanted nothing to do with. All the ugly, worst parts of me that I had a huge story around. And I had the choice to either keep resisting it or I could integrate them. And so as I did that, which was achieved through my daily practice, my spiritual path, therapy, the education that I received. I started to get this experience of the self. And in, in mine, it is this It is the one inside of me who can watch things happen. Without the attachment of the ego, without a judgment, without criticism, 
it's just this very wise, aware witnesser. And the more that I cultivated this concept of the self or this archetype of self, the more I could sit in it during my PMDD. So now rather than being completely consumed and swimming and fighting this dragon every month, now it was like I was watching myself fight the dragon. And I think now where I am currently, I feel the most myself than I have ever been in my life. And because I know who I am, when my PMDD comes in and tries to tell me, you're a failure, you're really bad, blah, 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 blah. I can sit in myself and go like, mm, no, <laughs> that's not me. But I had to go through the pain to get to this point. I had to go into my limiting beliefs and I had to really look at them and go, do I actually believe this about myself? I think one of the most painful parts about PMDD is the experience is so similar to who you are or who you think you are. And that negative voice inside of your head knows exactly what to say to you to hurt and to feel awful that we can become all consumed by it. Where we start to believe we are that week that happens to us. And that the rest of the month, we're faking it or it's not real. And so when we can create that distance and be with our PMDD in a way of like, okay, I, I see you. I hear what you're saying. There was a point in my life when that was probably true, but now it's not true anymore. And what's difficult is that this entire experience can be so intense and so profound, and it happens all inside of you. It's not like there's much external referencing that can happen. And so the decision or the frame, it's not like we can go to someone and be like, am I better? because this is an internal experience and it gives us the power and the insight into ourselves to go, I am better. I'm noticing how I'm better this month, how I'm just better as a whole. I know that when my PMDD was extremely bad and awful was when I didn't actually know who I was. And so when that week hit and all those awful things were being said to me, to myself, I believed them. I took them as just truth. And when you believe all those awful things that your brain tells you, you can't help but be affected by it. And it can't help but spill over and affect the rest of your life. And I think that's something that people don't talk about enough with this experience.
But when I really took on that journey of discovering the answer to the question of who am I, I noticed that I could kind of laugh internally at these awful things that my PMDD told me were true about myself. And I'm not going to lie to you. My brain during that week can still be real mean and nasty to me. But because I know who I am and have cultivated this experience of the self, I don't just take it as truth anymore. My PMDD manifests when it's being real spicy and nasty to me. Really at that moment, about three days in, when I just feel horrible, I can't concentrate, my body is bloated and uncomfortable, I have a headache, My emotions are all over the place, and I really feel disconnected from everyone in my life. My body literally feels uncomfortable to the point where I just want to, like, scratch my flesh off of myself. And I can't sit and do anything that I want to do, so all I can do is just lay there staring at a video or something to just be this, like, white noise to get me through the experience. And it's at that moment when my brain will say something along the lines of, yeah, you're never going to X, Y, and Z. This is what your life will always be. No matter how hard you fight on your good days, you will always end up back here, blah, 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 blah. And it's crushing. And sometimes I cry. I cry so hard. And I let it out. I let my emotions go through that experience. I let my body go through that experience. But now there's this moment where I can look at my life objectively and I can go, wait a minute. You might be right. I may at this date of the of the month every month cry and feel like I want to rip my skin off and all I can do is binge a Netflix show or something. Yeah, you might be right there. But don't ever tell me that I can never do anything or that I'm too broken or I'm too bad or whatever it's saying to me. Like you don't get to tell me that. Because my life as a whole is so much better than it's ever been. And that's come from my own power that I am capable and that I can do the things that I want to do. And just because I might be taken out a couple days out of the month completely or a whole week does not mean that those other weeks can be glorious. And There have been moments, and I might sound a little strange, but I'm kind of used to that at this point, where I will literally sit in front of a mirror and I will just tell myself off in the most loving way that I can. And I do it out loud where I'll just be like, look, Elizabeth, these things are just not true. Because look at all the things you've accomplished so far. Look at the meaningful relationships that you have in your life so far. Look at all the healing and progress and stuff that you've already done. All while having PMDD. Yeah, it might have been a whole lot easier without it. But you can still do it. And that's when I feel like I've really beat the dragon that month. When I have the capacity to have that moment with myself. At the end of the day, whatever brings you 
that moment, that realization of how awesome you are and whatever can help support that self-esteem. And I don't mean the superficial, oh, I have high self-esteem that gets kind of like co-opted by our culture and can be viewed as negative. I literally mean whatever fuels your self archetype, that bridge between your unconscious and consciousness. Whatever gets you to that point, that's your practice. That's your magic. That's your medicine. And no one can tell you what that is other than yourself. If you're interested in diving a little bit deeper into this concept of the self, I would really encourage you to read up on Jung. I feel like, you know, kind of the founding fathers of psychology definitely have their darkness <laughs> and uh, we're not always right. But I feel like the Jungian perspective when it comes to this has really landed for me. And so if you kind of follow that thread, I'm sure you can find something that really lands for you, whether it's in Jung or a different branch of the psychology tree. If I can end on anything, I would end yet again with hope. And something that I know to be true is that there is always hope. And so my wish is that something that I said or shared today at the very least sparked your hope. Because hope is what got me to this point. And even though I still have PMDD, even though some months are really hard and I feel like I am backtracking or whatever, I now have a really firm grasp on hope. And so in spite of all those things, in this moment, I feel pretty great. And most days, I feel pretty great. And so if most of your days can feel pretty great, then I think that's a win. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and listening to me ramble and babble on about the way my funky and unique brain uh, processes this stuff. I really enjoy spending this time with you. And to all the folks who take their time out of their day to send me a message on Instagram, just know that you really make my day when you do that. It is so touching and moving to just have the experience of other people resonating with what I share. And I think that is a part of the healing also, is when we hear, even if it's just a fragment of our experience in another and know that we're not alone in this. Like that can be really big medicine. And so just know that for all of you who have listened and for all of you who have gone the next step and sent me a message, just know that you have all contributed to my own healing and that that healing continues. No matter where you are in your cycle, whether you're in your hell week or whether you're in your fantastical, happy moments of your cycle, I wish you well. And until next time, take care. <laughs>